Scenes from January's town hall on housing. Housing issues made headlines throughout 2019. Helen, welcome to Mead Week and our annual year in review. I'm Brian Spann. Before we get started, a quick reminder that this week's issue of our award-winning newspaper, The Sound Off, features its own year in review in pictures. Make sure you pick up your copy today. Meanwhile, we started the new year with a new logo. As the nation's platform for intelligence information and cyber operations, it's time for a new visual representation for Fort George G. Meade that celebrates the past but recognizes the transformation of Fort Meade in its second century. Baltimore Gas and Electric is relocating a major gas line near the 175-295 interchange. And then when they come over here to, uh, to our sessions, it's the camaraderie and the friendship that's built here. We're a family here at Port Meade, these guys and girls. It's a uh, very tight-knit group. Last week, they did take time out to welcome Peter Francho, the Comptroller of Maryland, the state's Chief Financial Officer. Francho stopped by the tax center to recognize the good work being done by the staff and volunteers. And I would say that as we look across our ranks and we think about, you know, where we are, still even a hundred years later, there's not that many female leaders in, in certain instances. Navy Cryptologic 66 Petty Officer Jesse Linder is the active duty volunteer of the year. A large part of the restoration project took place a day before the observance. DPW Environmental's Mitch Keeler led a group of volunteers in installing a biolog along part of the Burba Lake shoreline. Meanwhile, last week, dozens of people patiently waited in line at the Fort Meade Exchange to get a taste of the latest food option. The grand opening of the Panda Express last week offers more than just another choice. Turning to other news, there was a record turnout for this year's Amazing Race. The third annual edition featured a competition between 30 teams made up of 240 service members and civilians from more than a dozen units on post. This year's guest speaker, Lieutenant Colonel Hyo Jin Cho, a 15-year Army veteran currently serving in the active reserve as Supply Branch Chief for the National Guard Bureau. During her presentation, she credited diversity as a key to her unit's success. This year, 47 color guards from across the state participated Grand Marshal this year, 99-year-old Lieutenant Colonel Alfred Shehab, a veteran of the Battle of the Bulge. This year, 92-year-old Joe Wright, a retired Master Sergeant and World War II veteran, joined 18-year-old Kylie Bowling, a Defense Information School student, in making the first slice. So this whole configure, the snaking configuration is part of the Army standard design for access control points. Although the MAPES ACP facility is nearing completion, it doesn't mean that the gate will immediately reopen to traffic. Uh, and we actually have received a grant from the local development council for $381,000 to build our own cyber lab here at Mead High School. Expanded gymnasiums, modernized computer lab, enhanced natural and LED lighting, and a floor plan that provides a collaborative, quality educational experience our children deserve. I ask each of you to remember not only the 2,996 lives that were lost on 9-11, but as of today, the more than 7,000 military and DOD civilians that we have lost since the war on terrorism began. Very good morning to you, Nick. Uh, Nick, we have the students from the Children's in Middle School Team Center in Fort Meade, Maryland, standing by for you. Well, it turns out being a uh, combat engineer wasn't a disqualifier, and uh, so here I am 120 days later after uh, notification. Meanwhile, in sports news, the 20th annual Fort Meade Army-Navy flag football game on Mullins Field this week ended with Army owning a third straight win and five out of the last six. The final score this year, Army 24, Navy 12. Uh, but we don't need that to have the kind of connected tissue that we've built. It's just a way of re-upping uh, periodically to show that we're not taking anything for granted when it comes to these amazing partnerships. And that's Mead Week for this week. I'm Brian Spann. For everyone at Mead TV and the Fort Mead Public Affairs Office, have a great Mead Week and a great holiday season.